but you got that truck running down the road. Um, talk about making sure that you're, you know, load planning right. You're you're finding the right freight to haul. You're you're getting the right freight rates, and you know that that's market conditions. But talk about the just the, by going out there, making sure you're establishing relationships and and getting obviously good freight to haul. You're you're hauling. You're going to be hauling loads that are going to be making you money. You know, the biggest part for a small company owner, you just said it, getting out there. He is his own salesman, and building those relationships. Even if you know you're not going to get the business from that facility, always do your best to meet and greet the the policy makers, the people that actually make the decisions. Introduce yourself. You never know what kind of opportunity will pop up out of that. The second part of that is service always sells. If you do a lot of trucking companies because they don't have the time to do anything else, simply pick up that load and deliver it. Nothing more, nothing less. Whereas you, especially if you have a dispatcher, they look for problems that may occur. They go ahead and resolve those. Or occasionally, we had this happen yesterday, a merchandiser was like, you know what, I have no homes for this product I need you to haul. Our dispatcher gave him two locations to check out. He got a sale on one of those locations for two loads, which was beneficial for us because we had a home for that product because we're not a warehousing company. It was beneficial for him because he got it sold, and it's a byproduct. So if he doesn't sell that product, it stays in the bin, the mainline operation stops so he's in trouble. And so I think too, and you talk about service, but even, you know, making sure you're hiring the right people. I was, uh, I was at church last week and sat down next to an older gentleman and come to find out he was an ex truck driver, uh, up out of Iowa and, uh, hauled actually, uh, cement out of Mason city for Transwood. And anyways, we got to talking and, uh, he made a comment and just stuck in my head. He goes, you know, I had a dispatcher up there and he goes, it's probably the only dispatcher that was truthful to me. Like in all of his years, like you mentioned, yeah, this dispatcher, he was the only one I liked. He was actually truthful to him. We're blessed in that category at BRB. Shannon is probably the best in my opinion. Yep. Around. Um, but there can be a disconnect between the drivers and the dispatchers, the load planners. and Well, think about it. A dispatcher a lot of times is a salesperson, too. There's a load set. You know, there's places that drivers like to go. There's places they don't like to go. There's loads that pay really great, and there's some that don't. It, you can't pick and choose only the things you want. You have to take, you know, without really getting deep in lost territory, you have to make the trucks roll. And sometimes that's in less optimum rate conditions or even less optimum destinations. So a lot of times a dispatcher is selling that load to a driver, whether it be at a company driver, owner, operator, or a broker carrier if they have broker authority. They're having to sell that load. Now, right now, spot's real uh, tight, so they're not selling as hard. But when things are running hard and fast, you know, they'll do whatever they got to do to make that, that load get down the road. And some of them, well, they get out in left field to make it more than <laughs> probably what it should be, you know. Talk about... This is a big one too. When when you're talking about hiring drivers and compensating drivers, there's different ways that you can you, you can pay or compensate drivers to run your truck. And I think there there's I guess there's not one there's not a one size fits all. No. But but talk about different ways that you can structure because typically drivers are paid. Uh, I, I shouldn't say typically, but in this industry, a lot of times I hear drivers paid on a percentage of what the truck makes. Yes, and for most small companies, especially on startup, first 10 years after startup, the driver gets paid 25 to 35% of what the truck makes. Of Depends. what the truck profits or what the truck grosses? Grosses. Okay, and so the usually, total dollars that truck's bringing in. And usually that's the freight, not the fuel surcharge, because the driver's not buying the fuel. The fuel, if you think of a fuel surcharge, that's technically reimbursement of the fuel price. So technically, or usually, typically, uh, the percentage pay is based on the freight pay. And like I said, sometimes it's lower if, a, you know, an owner has a really high revenue structure or a real high cost structure because he's doing something specialized and usually they go hand in hand. It might be 20%, but typically 25 to 35% is the norm. And it depends on what the rates are. If you're getting 
high volumes of low rate stuff, you know, that percentage is usually higher. What about if uh, if a company is allowing another company to uh, basically run their trucks or dispatch it? They got their own authority. What's usually the fee that's that's charged? You're talking about dispatch companies or brokerages? Uh, well, I guess we can talk about both because I know there's a difference. Dispatch companies be careful of because a lot of them are acting as brokerages without brokerage authority. And, you know, usually when you run into that situation – the trucking company is going to get burnt somehow, some way. Usually it's just they don't eventually the dispatch service that was operating in a way that they were not licensed for, it gets nailed or out of business and the trucking company is out, out money. And so when it comes to pure dispatch services, uh, I'm, you know what? I'm not that familiar with them because I've never had to use them, never really interacted with them. But the biggest thing is make sure they're booking the loads that you do for them in your authority. If yep. they're booking it under their name, they're not. They're acting as a brokerage. Mm. That would be the number one litmus test. Whose name is on the bill to for that load? Then they should be charging a back percentage of, you know, three percent, four percent to do the dispatch service of the load. Talk about. So we're talking about compensating drivers, but then even just when we're looking at loads to haul and the rates out there because you, you brought it up when you talk about fuel surcharge and all that but like is there a metric or, or mathematical formula when you're looking at a load on what to charge because that and i think that's the biggest discrepancy in the 20 years i've been in trucking like you know one guy could be at and i'm just throwing numbers out here three bucks a mile and then the next guy's at four bucks and like what's the difference in the one yeah, i always forget his name amel amel oh oh amel yeah amel yeah amel martin his tool you need to know your cost per mile. How many Marty miles? Emil. Marty Emil, that's yep. right. Uh, you need to know how many miles you're running on the load to include your deadhead. You need to know your cost per mile. That includes your fuel, your driver, and what your average aggregate cost of maintenance, insurance, everything else underneath that is. So at least you can calculate your break-even point. You know, sometimes you're going to be in a market area where just getting out of the area is going to be tough. You've got to make the decision, do I deadhead out of here or do I take something? You want to know what your truck is making per mile. So that, I'm going to use a rough number here, $3 a mile in the high fuel price regime. It costs your truck to operate one mile down the road loaded or empty. And you you get this $200 or 200 mile load, you want to at least break 600 just to pay for that trip and pay your driver. So anything above that will be, you know, profit. Yeah, that's good. And I think, I think that's probably one of the biggest in, in our industry too, typically, uh, truckers or owner operators can be price takers and not price makers. I mean, they got to know the price. But, you know, when, when we're dealing with loads and, and load boards, like typically that merchandiser's kind of got a freight in mind, but that owner operator's got to know the cost, to make yeah. that work and not just take whatever the rate is at hand. You know, brokerages probably hate it when somebody does this, but I would say, you know, they quote your rate. They quote you a thousand or they quote you 950. Ask, hey, can you go up another 50? Because, you know, especially if you're in a high deadhead load, just explain to them, I know this isn't your problem but I'm having to do a lot of deadhead here. And it's, if it's somebody you've done business with that you've had a good record with, you're probably going to get that extra 50 bucks. Yep. 50 Built bucks is 50 bucks. With. You know? Yeah, and that adds up. I mean, it if does. you do that X amount of times over the course of a year. You know, don't be afraid to ask for that extra. Uh, and at the same time, you know, don't ream them for, hey, it's a terrible rate. You know what? I'm just, I, let me run my miles. Let me see if I can make that work for you. Yeah. It, when that phone doesn't ring with you calling back, they know that rate's not going to do it. Neither going to wait for somebody else that takes that rate. If they need it moved, they're going to call you back. What do you need? 